These are the instructions for your visual analysis essay. You'll want to get started by compiling all of the information from your annotated bibliography. But as you look more at the picture, you might require more information. So feel free to find more sources on academic search complete. You might want to look up um, the origin of the picture, just put the title of the picture in, or no, you should be able to look up the time frame and the place where it's happening to get a clearer picture of, of why the photographer took that photo. Remember, this paper is due Sunday night, and it's just, it's the first draft of your image analysis, but it's still important. You want to put as much work into it as you can so that when you do the final copy, which is due the following Sunday, it will be perfect. When you see the first draft of my image analysis, you're going to notice that I'm not using all three of the sources I initially chose. Now I could have added one and had four, but there was one source I really didn't need because everything, the other two articles covered that information. So I went back to Academic Search Complete and I looked up because the picture was made in 1961, I happened to know that um, it was February 1961 and Kennedy had just been inaugurated on January 20th or January 21st of that year. So he was a brand new president. So I went back and looked up all of the things that he inherited from President Eisenhower who was his immediate predecessor. And then I looked at things that that would ha later happen because I this picture to me encapsulates his short administration. So I did some research there. Uh, and you'll note in the work cited that I've taken the binder source out because I did have the binder or binder or whatever it was, and I replaced it with another one. Um, right now, I can't recall the name, but it's uh, I think it starts with a Z or something like that. It's at the very end of my work cited. Remember, you must have at least three sources and all of them must be cited in the essay in the in-text citations. You'll start by preparing your header, your page number, font, margins, and line spacing for your essay, and you will insert your photo. Okay. Now the picture should be more, no more than a five by six, could be smaller, but I'm going to start at the top and just work down and talk to you about all of this. So follow instructions on how to construct your visual analysis. The directions have been organized into sections and that's the way you'll turn it in for the final draft. Uh, and of course, for this first draft, but your final draft will be in sections. And each section may very well have more than one paragraph. Well, I can tell you right now the observations, that's where you're going to have your thesis and your main points, that will be more than one paragraph. So you insert your picture here. First of the four sections is the photograph and the photographer. You'll introduce the photograph, tell about the author's background, who is he or she, what is or was his or her field of interest, and does this person have any artistic, artistic achievements and fame? This information will help you to analyze the context of the picture better. So, Write a good paragraph telling me about the picture and about the author. The next part is context and location. 
Discuss the context of the story. When and where was it taken? That's what I told you. I went back to Academic Search Complete to look up what was going on during the administration. But again, this is my first draft. So like you, I'm going to go back to the table. I probably will add more things there. But um, I wanted to give some background as to why the picture was taken and why it was taken with John F. Kennedy's back to the, to the picture, I'm sorry, to the camera. Okay, so explain a little bit about the temporal, in other words, relating to the earth or terrestrial, terra firma, and geographic, which is scenic dimensions of the picture. And you'll see more clearly what I'm talking about in, in my rough draft. Observations. Now, this is where you're going to write your thesis and three supporting points. Choose three of the elements from the chart below for your three supporting points. Now, write your observations. There can be one human or more than one, or just a landscape or an abandoned house, or an animal, and so forth. The best pictures are usually the ones that combine various elements, thus enforcing different impressions on the mind of the observer. Techniques the photographer uses would be included here. Below is a chart of some different techniques. So what I have told you to do and you'll see what my my thesis is, but I chose three of these elements to back up my thesis. So as you look at your picture, look at the lines. The lines can be conspicuous. I mean, you may see lines drawn in it, or it can be formed by the placement of objects. And in my picture, it's the latter rather than the former. They can differ in length, width, and direction. Or maybe you're looking at shapes. Shapes are two-dimensional, either geometric or organic. Familiar shapes help us focus on particular parts of an artwork. Or you might use form. Forms are three-dimensional, such figures as cylinders, pyramids, spheres, or forms. What about color or lack thereof? Color is light that reflects off of objects. Its main characteristics are hue, value, and intensity. Colors can also be warm or cool. Texture. A texture is a feel, appearance, or quality of an object's surface. Space. Space is a feeling of depth and can be positive or negative. It also has to do with how the photographer used the area in the picture. All right, so you will choose three of these. In some of them, for example, form might not work. Maybe if you're doing the Sphinx in, in uh, Egypt or the pyramids or the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but nobody has that. Um, now, there is one picture, and I won't say what it is, but that might be one that you would use form in. But I think that uh, there, I mean, you've got, what, six to choose from. I chose line, color, and... You know what? I'm not sure what the other one is. I'll have to, to get, I have to show you when I, when I do this out loud. Okay. And then finally, you have the message. Now is the time to grasp the meaning of the picture. Professional photographs always aspire towards disseminating or distributing important information or changing the attitude of people towards a definite issue. Social, political, and economic issues are mostly referred to. Here you need to analyze the picture against its background. Know where and when it was taken and who it is in the picture. Actually, see now, reading this out loud, it's the second time and I'm catching more mistakes. Who is in the picture? 
All right, let me go back. Here you need to analyze the picture against its background, know where and when it was taken and who is in the picture. Then it will be much easier for you to understand.